How's it going, guys? My name is Jason, and this is Learn, Build, Repeat. On this channel, I'm going to be sharing with you my journey as I go from mediocre craftsman to a skilled craftsman. I'll be sharing with you my successes and more importantly, my failures as I try and build life enhancing products. My goal is to both inspire and guide you on your own journey. Now, before we get started, I just want to give a little bit of background about who I am. I'm a software engineer and I have been for about the last 15 years. But about two years ago, I got into woodworking and wanted to build some beautiful furniture around the house. I tried my hand at some really early versions of it, but they were terrible. So in the next couple of videos, I'm going to be sharing with you how I build my shop, how I build some furniture, and the reasons and thinking behind it. And I find that last part really important because I really want to dive in with you and show you the learning and thinking that goes behind each of the things I'm going to build. On that note, let's talk about what we're going to be building today. Something very simple because I'm starting at the beginning, and that is an outfeed table for my table saw. This is a crucial thing for the shop because it lets you operate your table saw safely and has other uses like doubling as an assembly table or a sanding table. Additionally, I have a few other tools I'd like to store that are just kind of laying around my shop floor that I'd like to store in this outfit table. Let me show you what I'm talking about and make some drawings for you. All right guys, here's my simple outfit table that I'm gonna build. It's gonna be about six feet long, four feet wide and 37 inches deep. I think that this is, will be perfect for my shop. I have a two car garage and I'm not sure about the dimensions just yet, but this seems like a good starting place. I can always trim it if I need to because there's gonna be some overhang on each of the sides. The next thing is construction. I'm gonna choose a very simple method for building this. I'm gonna use two by fours for the legs and for the aprons, and I'm gonna play them down to make them look nice. And for the top here, I'm just gonna go for three quarter inch white maple. And I'm not gonna do drawers and I'm not gonna make it in lights to keep things simple. The top is one thing I'm kind of worried about. It's only three quarter inch thick and most workbenches and outfit tables have a little bit thicker top. There'll be self adjustable feet on the bottom of each of the legs so that I can raise and lower about an inch. Another really important feature about this workbench is it's gonna let me declutter my shop. I have an automated dust collection cart that which will actually slide in between, behind the table and sit there and be connected to my table saw. I've got a D-wall planer and I've got a Fez tool dust extractor, which I talked about in my last video. There's a, going to be a bench here which will be primarily used for my sanders and, and my sanding discs. Let me give you a quick idea of what I'm talking about for these three items. Okay, so this is my dust collection cart, simply a shop back hooked up to a five gallon bucket with a dust cyclone on top and then automatic vacuum switch. So when my table saw turns on, I mean, once it's connected, it'll automatically all turn on. And it usually sits right about here. And this will just go there. So the idea is that the table will be built above and around this. And then the second thing I want in the LP table is this Festool dust extractor. I reviewed this in my last video. It is awesome, link in description. I did manage to get the clips, by the way. And then the third thing is uh, my D-Wall planer. This one has TVD because it's pretty heavy. And I'm not sure I want it on the ground because it's hard to lift, but it'd be nice to get rid of this whole stand, put some casters on the bottom, and then just slide it right under the outfit table. Nice place for it. All right, now let's build this thing. First step is to cut the legs and the aprons. Let's get to it. All right, so for these long pieces on the side, I need six of them and they have to be four, four feet, 10 inches, and nine sixteenths. Let's cut those ones first. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut off one of the ends and set up a stop block. All right, now that we have a good end on each of these, let's cut them down to legs. So unfortunately, this miter stand is not long enough and it's hitting my shelf over there. So I'm gonna have to move everything over a little bit and maybe I'll just use that as my stop block for now. Luckily I do have casters. You can see I got casters on this. I can move it around pretty easy. Now we gotta cut the legs, these things. Okay, essentially what I'm trying to do is I wanna make sure that I have enough movement up and down with the option to add another three quarter inch. So what does that mean? That means that if I aim for a half inch height from the, these little legs things here, that means we're exactly two feet, 10 inches and 15 sixteenths. Let's cut one. Let's get everything laid out and make sure it's okay. Before I do that is I need to set up a stop block. Not a lot of room to set up a stop block. Let's take a three quarter inch piece of maple. Let's just make sure it'll actually fit. Uh, 
All right, so I can make them longer by about a half inch. Let's make, let's cut one at 211 and, I don't know, half inch, was that half inch? Sounds about right. Damn it. All right, let's try this again, make sure that the height is right. So the height is pretty much perfect. We're gonna make fine adjustments later. Okay, so I need six of those. All right, the next step is gonna be cutting the cross members that are gonna to attach to the front to the middle legs as well as supporting the shelf. I need four of them and they're 19 and an eighth of an inch long. Here everything is cut, including the previous pieces. Next step is to plane them down and make them look nice. If you ever wanted to know if your cyclone's full of dust, this is what it looks like. <laughs> Whoops. All right, now I've got the legs and the aprons playing down. I realized though that this one has a screw hole in it, it has a crack in it right, right there. I'm not sure if you can see it. So I'm gonna remake these legs really quickly and then we'll start cutting the rabbits. And All right, so I've cut the aprons for the front and back. I've cut the legs, I've cut some side members. But then I realized I forgot to cut the aprons for the the left and right side. So I'm gonna do that now, plane them down, and then we'll finally start assembling. Give me a sec. All right, everything's planed down now, everything's clean. Aprons, legs, more aprons, cross members. Okay, for the next part, we gotta deal with these things right here, these rabbits. So there's gonna be three rabbits alongside on the legs. So let's cut those out next. I've never actually done rabbits before, but I imagine there's two ways I can do it. So essentially what I'm gonna need to do is cut out something like this, cut out a notch like that. And there's two ways I can do it. I could either use a dado blade and just chip at it, or I could use this and make two cuts on this. If I make two cuts, that means I need to move the fence twice and reset everything up. If I use the dado blades, I can set up once and just kind of move the fence back as I do it. Which would probably be an easier option. But then I have to set up the dado blades. I don't have a zero clearance insert yet. Have to, I'd have to cut that out too. So not a big deal, but something I have to do. First, let's just see how this is going to go. I'd have to cut this out. Yeah, I'm gonna use a data blade because if I were to cut, if I were to make two cuts here, I'd have to have the saw blade all the way out. And then I wouldn't have that much fence to control it with, which would be a dangerous cut. And I wanna stay away from the blade. So I'm gonna set up my data blade and cut out one of my zero clearance inserts. Give me a second. All right, for this cut, I'm gonna use the miter gauge and the fence together. I've never used this miter gauge, so I just wanna make sure it's square first. Okay, there we go. I don't know what I did. I held it and maneuvered it with the, the square here and it locked right in perfectly. Let's double check my five machine is square though. Perfect. All right, let's make our first test cut. I've already marked the line of how far I want the fence away, so. And that's already set up to the height, so it should cut exactly where I needed to cut. All right, that made a lot of sawdust, but let's see how this fits. Oh, it's not quite deep enough. Oh, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now that we have it set up properly, now <laughs> let's cut our rabbit. Rabbits are done. All right, now I've finished like, cutting all the rabbits and sanded all the insides here. It's time to start assembling the base. Let me show you what it's gonna look like. There it is on my SketchUp. Essentially, we're gonna start making these base pieces here. We have one here, there's one kind of in the middle here, and then there's one at the front. So let's do that. 
I've already laid one out here. These connections are gonna be, I'll be using dowels for these connections. Dowels there, dowels there, dowels there. All right, now let's check to see if it's square. Perfect. 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 Wow. <laughs> this is probably the first square frame I've ever made. At least on the first try. All right, now let's just let it dry. All right, guys, I finished all the legs. This one here is the, gonna be the middle one. That one there is gonna be the back one. And this one behind me here is gonna be the front one. I used dowels in all the joints and I clamped them for about a day each. Today we're gonna assemble the base. We're gonna be putting on these cross members here, here, and there's one more over here, one more over here. We're gonna clamp those together with dowels, let them dry, and then we're gonna assemble the final, which will be this whole thing, this whole base component here. And again, we're gonna use dowels and more glue and more clamps. In case you're wondering how I figure out where I drill the dowels on the other side, I use these little dowel template pens with little spikes on the end. Okay, so I've marked where all the dowels are gonna be. You may have noticed that when I was drilling the dowels on the ends, I just did it by freehand, I didn't use a jig. So they're all not gonna be completely uniform. That means I need to remember the orientation of these cross members and where they go. And the way I'm doing that is I just make a small mark on each, it's a pencil mark there, the lines up here, and then I'm just leaving them where I want them to go in the end. And then when I transfer the mark over here, I just made sure that when I grabbed it and put the templating spikes on the end of the dowels, I just grabbed it and rotated the same way it would be finally assembled. Keep it simple. All right, let's drill these dowels. Okay, now all the dowels are drilled. Let's do a test fit and I'll glue it up. All right, everything behind me here is now glued up. I'm gonna let this sit for a bit and then we're gonna build this shelf. All right, let's see if it fits. Shoot. Okay. Okay, it's a little bit too short there. And it is definitely a little bit too short there. Looks like it's about an inch too short. Uh, mistakes were made. It's not a huge deal. I'll just add a little bit on the edge to cover that. I'm not gonna recut it because this white maple is expensive and I don't wanna waste this piece. Let's check the width. Okay, the width looks good. Okay, next piece. Let's use the jigsaw and cut these out. All right, I'm gonna use one of these aprons, which is the same size as what I need to cut out. As a template, I'm gonna mark with my pencil and then I'm gonna cut it out. But because this whole thing is an inch too short, I'm gonna cut this a half inch shallower than I normally would. Okay, so I've got some pocket holes under the bottom of the shelf that I'm gonna screw in next. Let's do that. All right, I just cut these two strips. I'm gonna put these on the ends where I cut a little bit short and I'm gonna use a little bit of glue and a brown nail to tack them on. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of polyurethane on this, just give it a little bit more durability. All right, I'm gonna let everything sit and cure for a few hours, then we'll finish making the base. All right, now you can kind of see how it's coming together. This space will be left open so that my dust cart will eventually slide in here, and this shelf will be used for my sanders. The next step is putting the aprons right along in these rabbits on both sides, and then the top, and then we're finished. All right, here are the aprons. They're gonna sit like here, and I'm gonna put dowels on each of these joints, including that one. So it's a nice strong connection and then I'll clamp everything up.
All right, <laughs> it's glued up. Uh, let's give it a few hours to harden and then we'll put the top on. I kind of like that, great. All right, next, let's take the clamps off. I did notice that I made a little mistake right here where this is a little bit too high. Looks like this two by four was bowed a little bit. And there's a little gap right there. It's not too big of a deal. I'll, I'll sand this down a little bit so it's more flush. But overall, so far it's looking good. Let's move it and put the top on. Okay, before putting the top on, I'm gonna put the self-adjustable legs on at the bottom. All right, now I've got it right where I want it to be. I gotta say that it's one thing seeing it in SketchUp in 3D, but it is entirely a different thing to see it in person. Okay, it's all level. What I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna put my dust collection cart and my Festool dust extractor in here and I'll show you everything. And then we'll make a few test cuts. You can see my dust cart and back there it's hooked up to my table saw. I have my dust extractor already placed in there with the hose ready to go to connect to whatever I want. This will give me a lot of space to assemble stuff and break down plywood when I need to. The top is nice and smooth. All right, let's give it a test cut. I've got this half inch white maple, four feet long. This would be very difficult to do without the outfeed table because it would just tip right at the end. Let's try this out. Look at that, easy. Let's do another one. Perfect. All right, guys, the table's done, completely done. If you guys like this kind of content, please like and subscribe. I'll be using this table to build some beautiful furniture in the future that you don't wanna miss out. I've learned a few things while building this table. When I was planning down the two by fours for the legs, two things I noticed. One, the two by fours moved a lot, which caused some issues with alignment later on when I was assembling the base. And they caused so much sawdust that overflowed my five gallon bucket. I'm gonna have to either upgrade that in the future or think of some other solution. But overall, I am very happy with this table. It's gonna let me build some awesome things in the future. And I'm considering a few upgrades as well, like T-Track and power strips built into it and some grooves for a crosscut sled. But for now, I am thrilled that I built it and I can't wait to build some stuff with it. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next one.